on November 16th, 2022, at 7.48 a.m. our time, the Orion Space Capsule lifted off with the new SLS launch vehicle from Cape Canaveral Cosmodrome in Florida. NASA and the U.S. thus ushered in a new era of manned spaceflight as the Artemis program aims to establish the first permanent lunar station in just a few years. What exactly is NASA planning to do on the moon? And what will life be like for the first lunar settlers? Follow us now on a mission that will change everything for humanity. The rocket and the spaceship are ready for takeoff. With the brand new SLS, NASA finally has another rocket on the launch pad that is powerful enough to shoot a space capsule all the way to the moon. What sounds a bit like a well-known saying is actually a technical challenge. It is not at all easy to shoot material or people to the moon, or to have them fly gently. The thrust with which a space shuttle lifts off from the ground has to be much higher than for a flight that carries a satellite or a space telescope like James Webb into space. For a long time, there were such massive problems with the new SLS rocket technology that the launches of the first Orion spacecraft were postponed several times. Actually, no one had really expected the Artemis mission when NASA finally announced the launch. NASA cannot afford any further delays in the race for the moon. Just recently, the Chinese rover Chang'e 5 found large quantities of water on the moon and a raw material that could enable environmentally friendly nuclear fusion on Earth in the future. So, the moon is also moving into the world's focus for entirely economic reasons and whoever launches the first airline to the moon, including the possibility of transporting larger cargoes, will win the race in the long run. Blue Origin and SpaceX are also interested in colonization and economic use of the moon. SpaceX and NASA are likely to cooperate in the future. The Starship Human Landing System will also put NASA's first scientists on the moon, and the two companies' plans for infrastructure such as pipelines and roads on the moon, as well as 3D printed housing modules, are similar. Humans Return to the Moon It's been more than 40 years since the last humans landed on the moon. Now, it's supposed to be that time again soon. As early as 2026, the Artemis 3 mission will take the first humans to the moon, and the second manned lunar flight will take place the following year as part of Artemis 4. From this point on, lunar flights by NASA as well as SpaceX will very likely soon be part of everyday life. Exactly how the mission progresses will, of course, depend on how humans cope with lunar sojourns. The first astronauts should not stay longer than five days on the moon. The second crew will already be able to stay one month on the Earth's satellite, and then stays of up to half a year are planned. At present, even astronauts of the ISS do not stay longer in space because scientists are still studying the consequences of stays in weightlessness or outside the Earth's gravitational pull and cannot say for sure up to what limit the human organism tolerates the unaccustomed conditions. The Human Landing and Transport System both trips to the lunar surface will be made using a variant of the SpaceX Starship, the Human Landing System. This landing vehicle serves as a space capsule, descent capsule, and locomotion and living vehicle for two astronauts. The vehicle provides the two lunar explorers with a living and working area about 9 meters in diameter. With the vehicle, the astronauts will go on exploration tours and will see more of the moon than any human has ever seen before. Later Artemis missions will then live in special houses made directly on the moon from raw materials found there and with the help of a 3D printer. The first permanent crew will consist of four astronauts. In addition to the exploration of the lunar surface, it will then already be about the exploitation of resources and the establishment of the first lunar greenhouses. All in all, NASA's plans are exciting, and for us viewers from Earth, the new impressions will be unique. The colonization of the moon is nevertheless only the preliminary stage to still much more far-reaching projects. Because soon, the first flights to Mars are to follow, and the step on the moon is only the preparation for the step of mankind into space. A living community of man and machine. We can also look forward to completely new concepts of living and working, because on the moon there is to be 
a harmonious symbiosis of the work of man and machine. In fact, rovers and robots will do most of the work, especially in places where it's not so easy for humans to work and stay. NASA has gained so much experience through the construction of Mars rovers, such as Perseverance and Curiosity, that it will be easy to build lunar rovers and bring them to the celestial body. The accommodations and supply systems for humans on the moon must be technically perfect facilities. Since outside conditions are lethal to humans within a very short time, the supply of breathing air and the safe compartmentalization of habitats must be fully functional at all times. The lunar houses will be something like living artificial intelligences that safely provide protection and the well-being of their inhabitants. To provide enough breathing air at all times, NASA plans to build a pipeline from the moon's south pole to the planned site where the first Artemis ground station will be built on the moon. Oxygen on the moon is obtained from the naturally occurring regolith rock or minerals enclosed in it. The molten regolith electrolysis is used to extract pure oxygen from the rocks and to transport it via a pipeline to a depot near the dwellings of the people. The depot is to ensure that there is always enough breathing air available. Should there ever be a problem, the oxygen must last for several days in advance. In addition to supplying human habitats, the oxygen is used to pressure rovers and even as an oxidizer for rocket engines. In the long term, there are even plans for a dedicated rocket launch base on the moon so that humans can return to Earth from the moon independently and at almost any time. Oxygen protection technologies should be ready for construction by 2024 and the first Artemis astronauts to land on the moon in 2026 will already be laying the groundwork for pipeline construction. The LTV and HMP Lunar Rovers the first lunar moon rover was driven by Apollo 15 astronauts David Scott and James Irwin. The rover still lands on the moon today and would be a priceless collector's item on Earth. The next generation of lunar rovers is the Lunar Terrain Vehicle, or LTV. As early as Artemis IV, the vehicle is expected to land on the moon and then be in use for many years as a means of transportation. The rover can be driven by an astronaut behind the wheel or controlled remotely. NASA is even experimenting with the possibility of it functioning as an autonomous vehicle controlled by an artificial intelligence. Plans call for the LTV to be used in lunar exploration as a normal means of transportation and especially in the search for water ice and other valuable lunar resources. Like a lunar camper, the much more comfortable, habitable mobility platform will be equipped a hybrid of a habitation module and a means of transportation, the HMP can be operated and driven by humans without spacesuits. The vehicle includes all major life support systems and will allow lunar explorers to make days-long excursions into the lunar landscape. Plans call for the vehicle to be deployed starting sometime between Artemis 5 and 8. The Olympus Housing Project Now you surely ask yourselves, how such a moon house will look exactly. NASA didn't really know either, so they simply handed the job over to the most innovative and progressive companies on the planet. The result is a 3D printed system built by the US company Icon, which is already being tested. The $57 million contract calls for the construction of a complex living and working facility on the moon. In 2018, an Icon printer spit out the first component made from lunar dust. Then in 2021, the Mars Dune Alpha Habitat, somewhat reminiscent of a Big Brother container, was created on NASA's Houston, Texas site, providing astronauts with everything they need to live and work. The first real lunar habitat will be Project Olympus. 3D printing technology will be transported to the moon, starting with Artemis Missions 5. The creation and construction of the modules will then take place directly on site. In order to optimally protect the houses against radiation, the regolith will be mixed with a resin-like chemical. The result is a substance that resembles cement, but is stronger, more flexible, and has fewer pores. The first practical demonstration for Project Olympus is planned for 2026 and represents another milestone in the conquest of space by humans. Almost nothing works without spacesuits. In April 2023, the time had finally come. 
NASA also finally unveiled the brand new prototype lunar spacesuits. The suit, developed by private spaceflight company Axiom Space, is designed to offer more flexibility and better thermal protection than the modules used on previous Apollo missions. The suit consists of multiple layers of protection, a backpack containing all vital systems and a helmet-mounted high-definition camera. Eric Vallis personally demonstrated the suit. The Axiom chief engineer spun around, did knee bends, and even briefly crawled across the floor to impressively demonstrate just how flexible the new astronaut suits really are. Of course, the moon suits of the Apollo missions served as a basis, but since the astronauts at that time had massive problems with aggressive moon dust and razor-sharp moon rocks, improvements had to be made. The fine dust had penetrated the zipper systems at that time and had almost completely paralyzed the zipper technology. Classically, almost all astronauts wore white, and NASA was initially sold on the idea of using new colors like black or blue. In tests, however, the dark suits did not pass muster. The white reflected the sun's rays best in tests, and the suits are also very easy to see on a moonlit night and stand out clearly from the background at all times. The development of the white spacesuits is said to have cost around 213 million euros. The haute couture for the moon was thus considerably more expensive than the lunar habitat, but the investment is worth it because the same suits, if they prove their worth, will soon be flying with humans to Mars. The time will come in 2026 when the first astronauts will put on the brand new suits and set off to explore the moon. Are you as excited as we are? And are you looking forward to these great developments in space travel? Or are you rather critical of projects like the colonization of Mars or the Moon?